the dark satellite. After identifying the Phoenix was every 138 years and identifying the Nemesis X object was every 732 years far away. And then perihelion was a 60 year period that is well documented. And I've showed this every 60 year period that the Sumerians talked about. That's when Nemesis X object was here. It was here for 60 years at a time. It is very slow moving. And then for 732 years, it's gone. It, it doesn't deviate from that pattern one year. Not a single year does it deviate. It's always 60 years close to Earth, 732 years away from Earth. 60 years close to Earth, 732 years away from Earth. This goes all the way back to the fourth millennium B.C. The pattern is perfect all the way to modern times because it comes back in 2046. And then in the 6,000th year of the Annus Mundi calendar, 2106, it, it leaves, and it's gone for another 732 years. That 60-year pattern that the Sumerians and Babylonians and Akkadians recorded and said that was important, it was a 60-year window when the Anuna had intercourse with humans. Outside of that 60-year window, the Anuna were gone. They were gone for 732 years. Then all of a sudden, they reappeared. They interacted with humans. They introduced more technology, uh, more infrastructure, uh, more in knowledge, um, left behind all kinds of relics and stuff, then they were gone for 732 more years. Well, this is what my Anunnaki Homeworld book is about in my entire uh, YouTube playlist, The Anuna Files, is about this, this 792-year periodicity, which is 30 years close to Earth and 732 years far away. So when I had isolated these two, it bothered me. It bothered me profoundly that there was five five different historical events that are very unusual that always involve some terrible shit. Stuff that said, one of them is the Tower of Babel. One of them was 713 BC when the year changed. The Assyrians recorded a new uh, uh, a new cataclysm and they said the heavens changed. And, every, and I itemized the Emmanuel Velikovsky did a better job than me, but I itemized every culture in the world that in that year of 713 BC changed their calendars from 360 days to 365.25. Something happened to the sky, so the stellosphere turning at 360 degrees, now all of a sudden the stellosphere was slower. It moved slower. We laughing about it. <laughs> Lord T. Okay. Said is Matthew Jason's son. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. We're a lot closer in age than you think. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I've never seen Lord T before. I'll be watching out for you, man, smart ass. <laughs> Look. Anyway, oh uh, long story short. I have not done any videos. I've only released one one video that, that, that talks about it. It's called the Dark Satellite. Uh, but I'm not really talking about the uh periodicity. I have charts in my super pack thumb drive. And I've given the charts out on the dark satellite when, when it was here, when it, what happened, the dark satellite actually alters the programming of our world. It does some really weird stuff. It was here in 1899 BC. It, it did the Babel incident. It, it also altered now the calendars from 360 days to 364. That's a major edit. It's a super major edit to every, every culture in the world to change its calendar. Yeah, it's crazy. All the for those of you who don't know, all the oldest calendars, none of them were predicated on 365.25 days. None of them. They were all divisible. The all the Vedic yugas, every single yuga uh, uh, is divisible by 360. Every Sumerian epic is divisible by 360. The 432,000 uh, shars of the Babylonian dynasty of the of the kings before the flood is all divisible by 360. All 13 Bactons of the Mayan long counts 1,872,000 days, which ends in 2046, is divisible by 360. None of these old calendar systems were divisible by 365.25. None of them. None of them were even divisible by 365. So it's a the dark satellite is a super construction. It appears in the sky, and it's like it's like an interference pattern. It like it, it's almost as if it rewrites the coding for everything going on in the world, and it and it creates division and separation. It actually retards human development. 
the dark satellite is a uh, it's pretty harrowing, and the, its next return is 2052. So for me to find all these weird patterns, the 138 years which is recorded in history, it's the Phoenix, it's the Phoenix chronology, which the ancient Jews called the Angel of Death, uh, the Chinese called the Fink. Uh, uh, I mean, it has so many different names. The Norse called it the Fenris. It eats the sun and moon. It's all the same thing. Um, uh, it's called Noth in ancient China, in ancient Egypt, but Noth, but you understand, just like the goddess, the goddess Neith is the Greek goddess Athene, but the Egyptian, the Egypt, but in Egyptian, it's, a, it's a, a, what's her name? Oh my God, I'm having a brain fart. All these Egyptian deities, when they're, when you see them spelled inversely or in, rever in reverse, those are the Greek names of the gods, but this is not a mystery. That's not even that has nothing to do with with, with uh, simulation theory at all. It has everything to do with the fact that one culture wrote from right to left, and one culture wrote from left uh, left to right. So when they were writing, they conveyed the idea of text linearly, like they're supposed to. But when they got to the pronoun pronouns, they just flipped them over. So that's uh that's that's why we got that. The dark satellite returns in 2052. It's going to bring with it the seven kings. The seven kings are the subject matter of the beast, the beast empire. They they will return at the height of the apocalypse. 